<laughs> so I was going to sing it, but I think they do it better. <laughs> um, so mine builds off of Miriam's beautiful presentation. Uh, and it's uh, my dream to uh, develop a psychotherapy that's very different. It um, uses positive emotions to help people be brave enough to face it. To be brave enough to slow down. Well, so, I'm going to try to sell you this. So what I want is there to be long lines. <laughs> long lines come into therapy. They'll be saying, there's my therapist. Gil will have all the therapists. <laughs> and then you'll be going to coffee and say, guess what I learned this week about myself? What new strengths I have. New ways to enjoy life. What's really meaningful to me? So the excitement is the psychotherapy that you go and the ideas that you learn about yourself. You learn about your strengths. People don't know about their strengths. So you have experts that know how to listen and say, that's a strength. Also, identifying your own meaning in life. So you can accept your religion, your culture, your parents' meaning in life, but you might want to be sure about that. Uh, using your positive emotions to grow, learning about positive emotions. There's a lot of research. And learning to be your own best friend. So, you ready to go therapy? Um, so is that impossible? So, uh, the worry is, pain is unescapable in life. Some people define life as pain. But at times, pain is less. You know, if you're mindful, if you're paying attention, my Achilles heel isn't killing me. I'm not worried about anything for this moment. So what do you do at that moment? And that's when you learn to engage. You learn to enjoy life. And you try to expand those moments. And that's what therapy does. It helps you do that. So over the last 15 years, there have been thousands of research projects in positive psychology. And they have pointed to the helpfulness of positive emotions. You have better mental health as you have more positive emotions. Your physical health gets better. There are studies that show, if you look at people's pictures, uh, this was the nun study, they call it. They looked at first grade pictures, and if you're smiling in your first grade picture, you're gonna live longer than the child who was not smiling. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> it's almost too late. <laughs> uh, you have better social, better intimate relationships with greater as positive emotions increase. You have greater success. You know, everybody knows that when you succeed, you feel happy. That's the way we all learned it. But the research shows that if you're happy, you're more likely to be successful, that people see you as more attractive, more friendly. You get better raises than the people that are doing the same things you're doing. It's really interesting. Uh, so psychological growth happens easier, and we'll be talking more about that. You face problems more courageously if you feel like you have greater access to positive emotions. You're more fearless. Um, you're helping with positive societal changes to a greater extent. Now, the really interesting thing about how long do you think positive emotions last? It's, it's like 20 seconds. <coughs> you know? So it isn't like you can get that new Corvette and say, oh, I'm going to live long now. <laughs> I'm going to be happy. I'll have good relationships. Those, those things don't last. You know, the best lasting things are good relationships because people keep stimulating you to have another 20 seconds of positive feelings. And you need to think of how, how many ways can I have a positive feeling 
uh, to keep them going because they don't last long. Unfortunately, we can drag uh, negative feelings out for a long time. Um, so what does the therapist do? Well, the first thing you come into therapy, people come in because they're in pain, typically, unfortunately. You don't have to come in just because you're in pain, but people typically do. And so it's important to hear the pain, that you have to be respectful, that perhaps somebody has not ever told anybody about that. Typically, telling the pain doesn't produce change. Uh, so you move on to uh, notice and restrate, uh, restate and celebrate a person's strengths. As a person learns more about their strengths, and this uh, important therapist is noticing that you're strong and you have all these things going on for yourself, you begin to develop hope, confidence, uh, uh, fearlessness, and also, you're more willing to set a goal, and as soon as you're willing to set a goal, then you're starting to reveal your values and what makes life meaningful for you. That's important. You also learn uh, self-compassion, and that's supportive. Uh, our results are that you become brave and empowered, and you enjoy a meaningful life. Yay! <laughs> so, what makes for a good goal? Uh, the first thing is it's called an approach goal. You need to know what that you're going for what you want. You're not avoiding what you don't want. And so people will come in, of course, at first and say, I don't want to be depressed. And so, okay, you don't want to be depressed. Well, what do you want? So anxiety and depression are great distractors from us ever living a meaningful life, that they try to take us away. And so it's very important to be able to have the ability to make good goals. And so what do you want? And so the intrinsic versus extrinsic. So intrinsics are the best, the longer well-being. And so personal growth, healthy relationships, contributing to things that are bigger than us, that are more important than us. Extrinsic goals are positions, possessions, fame, and beauty. And one minute left. <laughs> I was just feeling beautiful. <laughs> okay, so the good life. How do you get to the good life? You have frequent positive emotions, healthy relationships, meaningful goals that you want, and able to accomplish meaningful goals. So if you can get to that, good things happen. Our outcome, so three years evaluation projects, uh, we are reducing symptoms as good as the best-selling therapies. Uh, people like it a lot better. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you. <laughs>